Happy it's my uh, Friday. Pre, Happy pre, Thursday. Pre Friday. I know my kids are off tomorrow, so it is my Friday. Um, we're going on vacation. Yes. Which well, is I mean, awesome. big, we're like driving to the mountains, but that counts. It is. We will not be here. Hello, friends. Um, if you're new to the channel, I am Sarah. This is Anna. We are both resellers. Um, we're just having a casual chat. We talk about what's going on in our business. Feel free to let us know who is joining us today. And as always, feel free to ask questions. Um, sometimes it chat keeps going pretty quickly. So if you want to type question ab above it, next to it, to make sure that we get to it. So what's up, Anna? How is life? What's going on? It is going. Um, I have been on a quest to list a lot. So that's been interesting because fortunately it's been really fun. I've been doing a bunch of stuff with eBay over the summer. And so I've traveled more than usual and I don't know about you, but when I travel, it's like not just the time that I'm gone while I'm traveling. It's like the time before it and then the time after and trying to like get my life back in order whenever I'm back. So um, consistency is a hard thing for me anyway. And so not complaining at all, but it's just the fact of life that if I'm traveling, you know, one or two times a month, my whole month is kind of out of whack. So no, it totally throws it off like personally, but then also like, yeah, business wise too. Cause then you're not like, you can't ship while you're here unless you have a shipper. Right. Right. Um, Which I don't. Yeah. Right. yeah. And like, I mean, it's not like for whatever good or bad this is. It, I haven't had like a ton of sales even while I was gone. It was like very slow. So it wasn't like, oh my gosh, I have to ship for like two solid days to catch up, which it sometimes is. It has been in the past like that, like when I travel for Christmas and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so I've just been trying to like find some, some consistency and I've definitely been enjoying the free scheduled listings on eBay that didn't used to be free, but are now it's free, free now to schedule them. That so, has been life changing because I used yeah. to wake up in the morning. Like I have VAs who do drafts for me. Yeah. And I would wake up every morning and go through and launch them and check them. And I mean, it was only like 10 or 15 minutes, but now I'm like, I don't even have to worry about doing that. I can do all of them at one time and review yeah. them. Um, I've actually gotten to the place where I don't even review them anymore because my virtual assistants are better listeners than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I trust you. <laughs> Yeah, because they do the research and stuff, right? I'm like, I don't yeah. know. I'm trusting that you're looking and this is actually what you're saying it is because I didn't do the research. I just – Yeah. Yeah. It's like at a certain at a certain point, you're just going to be like checking their work by redoing it, and that's kind of pointless. Right. I mean, maybe right. for a spot check or something, but yeah. But that's great that you have people who are so good at it and you can trust them. Um, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still one woman showing that part of it um, for now, but uh, yeah, it has been – so, so one of the things that I, I sort of talked about this a little bit last week and then way back when we were doing this earlier in the year was, um, I had just moved. So now I've lived here for six months and that has been like a massive transition still, but you know, something that has been really hard is just finding consistency, even when everything is, has been really slow, which it has. I mean, I didn't list anything new for like months and months and months during the process of moving leading up to it afterwards, you know, getting my household in order. So now I'm just really just now consistently listing new stuff. I think I listed my new stuff that was for the first time in like eight months or something in oh May. God. And then like I listed a little bit here and there, like in May and June, not so much hardly anything in July. And then August, like a little bit here and there. So anyway, September has been like, okay, I'm going to have enough things on hand that I can actually do a bunch of listings, like a hundred or more in the month just by myself and, you know, schedule like at least, you know, three to five a day or whatever. So I'm finally like got that going. And Are you really, going to get really someone nice. up here, up here, like we live together? <laughs> up here. Right. I am way closer to you now than I was. So. <laughs> right. But we're not like we're remotely. I mean, we're yeah. not both up here, but are you going to get someone um, up there? to help you? Cause I know your sister-in-law does stuff, but she's not there. So are you yeah. someone? Yeah. So I hope so. I can't afford to at this point. Um, frankly, I'm like barely able to pay myself at this point because that's how much it's slowed down. But like, truly I let things just sell through on their own for like pretty much eight months. And so everything that was left in my store was like the long, long, long tail stuff, which is interesting because it's like, 
I'll still sell some random little thing for like a crazy amount of money in my mind. Like even if it's 25 or $30 for a matchbook or something. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, that's awesome. I'm willing to wait forever for that to happen times 10,000. But just the consistency factor is pretty much gone in sales because there's no new stuff. That's all of the low hanging fruit quickly selling things have not been there for months and months and months. That's a new so stuff. that's kind of like where I'm at. But I think, um, all of that is starting to have a little bit of fruit because like even just this month in the last couple of weeks, I've listed some new stuff that I found recently. I had a really fun all day yard sailing with one of my best friends, which I hadn't done that at all. Like since I moved here pretty much. And like, there's like several things that I paid, you know, a quarter for at a yard sale that have sold for $25, $40, $50. And I'm like, yes. And like quickly, like that sold within a couple of weeks of when I found it. So this brings up an interesting point because in the community, there's so much about like, list, list, list. You have to list every day. Yeah. And based off of what you've done is you went eight months without really listing and yeah. things are still selling. So it's not like, I just want people to understand that the listing every day isn't necessarily eBay gives you sales, right? Like eBay doesn't care. No, <laughs> it's not. It it's right. not part of the algorithm that you listing. It's part of buyer behavior. Exactly. Right? And so- yeah if there's new, if you have a bunch of stuff that it takes one person to find and it takes them a year to find it, it's not going to be selling. And so when you're listing new things, there's new things that are coming on. I also want to point out if you guys don't follow us and you don't know what Anna was doing is over when she was listing, she was doing sell similar. Yeah. Um, so she was ending her items, listing them again as sell similar. So they looked like new items for the mm -hmm. algorithm, which does give you yeah. a, a bump in how eBay is going to show your item. Right. But at the end of the day, your item is sold because of the buyer. Correct. Right? Like, eBay can do as much as they can to help it get in front of the buyer. But at the end of the day, the buyer is the one who clicks that button, pays the money, decides if they want it. Right. So it's yeah. a lot of buyer behavior. Absolutely. And just a lot of the things that I sell are like, the right person just needs to see this. And even if eBay has been, even if I've been promoting it hard on eBay, itself and you know it's a great listing if that person hasn't looked on ebay for the entire lifespan of that item it hasn't sold <laughs> so like that's how right. it works but i i mean there is right and it goes for like running sales like if you run this crazy yeah. sale if no one's seeing it it doesn't matter right yeah. like they have to be able to see it to know that they want it at this great price yeah absolutely it, yeah like the exposure is crucial but I think there's like some, obviously something to the algorithm stuff. The algorithm loves consistency, you know, and like part of that is just because of the byproduct of buyer behavior when you have consistency. So yeah. like, it's not, it, it is a little mysterious and there is like a technical back end to it, but like, I feel like all of the algorithm stuff is kind of secondary to the things that we have control over about the quality of our listings and how we run things, but also secondary to what are the buyers looking for? And are mm -hmm. our buyers actually looking where our things are listed? Right, so. right. Yeah, so the algorithm is all stemming from buyer behavior, right? So eBay yeah. does it and the algorithm is constantly changing, but it's based off of buyer behavior, what people are looking at, what people are clicking on, what people are buying, keywords that they're looking at. It's not, I, it just drives me crazy. And I know you know this, but it just drives me crazy when people are like, oh, eBay is not giving me sales, eBay is not. And I'm like, eBay doesn't, like, why would eBay not give you sales? Because they make money if you make money, right? Uh -huh. Like, they're trying as hard as they can. <laughs> now, if you are, you have horrible feedback and you're not shipping items on time, then yes, they're probably not going to give you sales because as a whole, yeah, that makes eBay look bad. Right. Um, but yeah, they want your items seen. But if no one's buying them and clicking on them, then they're going to get something else seen. Um, and get yeah. Canceled. Well, I have a question for you, Miss Analytics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had a question for you. I just wrote down a question for you. Oh, you okay, okay. No, no, go ahead. I'll talk analytics first, though. Let's go. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> well, okay. One of the easiest things, like, y'all have to understand, I also love data analysis, but I come from, like, a behavioral science background. So, like, marketing and commerce analytics is still kind of a different thing for me to wrap my head around. Yeah. I really appreciate and love statistics and statistical analysis, but I'm not, like it's like a different language for me being in this world with data, but I love data. So anyway, so one of the things that's been really easy for me to wrap my head around um, is just the idea that like, okay, like what are the signs, right? Like if 
there's a bunch of traction on your listing, for example. There's a lot of impressions. There's a lot of views, lots of watchers, but nobody is buying it. Mm -hmm. Like that's a sign that maybe your price is too high, right? Mm -hmm. Like that could be one of the things that's going on and therefore a strategy of like maybe lowering that price by using a coupon or putting it on sale or just lowering the price straight out, like that might move that item. I'm just curious if there, that to me makes sense. That's just like A plus B equals C, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But like, I feel like people get really like lost in the weeds with some of the other data that we have access to. And so I'm just wondering if there's any other like really clear cut situations that you have encountered lately as things have been slow where you're like, okay, this is another case where A plus B clearly equals C. And this is yeah. how you would, you know, try to rectify that. I mean, obviously we are all scratching our heads when things are slow, but like for me, that one is really clear. Like if I can look into my listings and see that that's the situation, then I'm like, okay, maybe I really do need to lower my price because, you know, I always price things high and I have room to lower them, but. Yeah, especially know. if there's competition like some of your stuff you're probably like the only thing out there and then you can kind of price it whatever you want yeah exactly it happens but with the saturation yeah i mean that's definitely a big one the first thing like the first thing that i look at when sales are slow well there's two things that i really look at is your impressions mm -hmm. right we were talking a few minutes ago is like if people don't see your item they can't buy it they can't right. click on it they can't buy it so if you're in, like that's where i always start i'm like sales are low start with my impressions yeah what's going on are they compare them to last month compare them to last year it depends on your um business like for me it's very seasonal right so comparing or a lot of people right now are like q3 q4 we're ramping up in theory we should be ramping up <laughs> um to what it is Comparing it to summer, summer numbers isn't really a good comparison because summer is usually slower. Um, so comparing it to the previous year and Last doing year. whatever you need to do to get the impressions up. And then if that doesn't trickle down, then you go to like, what's like, why aren't people clicking on this and what can I do? It's like photos and price and shipping costs um, and comparing to your competition. I would love to say that I have figured <laughs> Out something like, oh, obviously I looked at this number and it means this and now my sales are back because that's not the case right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot of like mystery wrenches thrown in, it feels like right now. I, I will say this time last year, I was kind of scratching my head, like what's going on. And based off of what I just said is when I started messing around with promoted listings, because it was like, if people aren't seeing my items, yeah, they can't buy them. And promoted is going to put my items in front of, you know, thousands of more people. Yeah. And then my sales would get a little bit better. However, now my net is not great. <laughs> I was just looking at my numbers um, before the call. Yeah. I'm like, my sales are only down 10%, right? Yeah, so like, year oh, over year. Yeah, year Mine over year. Mine are too. Mine are too. Not bad. My net sales are down 30%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My net sales are terrible. Uh, right. But I recently sliced in half my, uh, my uh, promoted listings rate. I sliced it in half. Me and Ken were like, we're going to rip off the band and just slice them in half. Yeah. So this is interesting. We talked about it a little bit. I still have a question for you, but it kind of goes into oh, yeah. the net. Okay. It, well, it kind of goes into the net too, because yeah. like my sales are not that bad. 10% down is not awful. Yeah. Um, Poshmark is trash though. So that makes my altogether sales really bad. But um, I had a meeting. I was trying to think where I was going with this. I had a meeting with a growth advisor. Uh, so... Oh they pulled it. I mean, you've had it like they pulled yeah. that's and they're looking at it. <laughs> he was like, Oh, so good news and bad news. Essentially, after we talked for an hour is I am doing everything right. My numbers are because you have like how your conversion is compared to the conversion of your category. Mine is right. like two or three times the average my wow. like all of the metrics are fine. Um, and so the only thing these are the two things that he said, um, is to lower my promoted um he was like at the end of the day i think it like kind of caps out yeah. and if your biggest impact is on your net right now lowering your promoted is going to at least put a little bit more money in your pocket yeah um so and i had planned on doing this i have a video coming out if you're a member uh it's already out there so you guys can go check it out but if not i think I, it's coming out on saturday um i got rid of promoted listings <laughs> I got mad. I think we talked about it last week. Yeah, I got yeah. mad and I was like, I'm done with this. Um, not a great choice. And then you're but, like, <laughs> yes, right. So then I did turn them back on. But so they're back on now. And my intent before talking to the growth advisor was um, I lowered them. I was at 18%. I started turning them back on at 15 and I was going to kind of get it to where it was consistent and then slowly go down like maybe one or 2% a month. 
and kind of find where that happy medium place is. Yeah. Um, Cause you do still want to make sales, but it's coming out of your net. Right. Yes. Like, let, me keep, let me just keep talking. Cause this leads into my next point of my yes, question go, go. for you. Um, you had mentioned that like, cause I was like, Oh, are you going to get a virtual assistant? And you're like, Oh, I'm not taking money home. And yeah. I, you know, and I've actually thought about, cause I pay a virtual assistant and I'm like, well, that's my biggest expense right now. Do I get rid of a virtual assistant? Um, I don't want to list though. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is. <laughs> right. And so that, so then I'm like, and this is, I mean, I'm kind of just talking this through, but I'm like, if I get rid of a virtual assistant, I cannot, I don't have the time to list as much as they're listing. Yeah. So then I'm not listing as many items, but then all of the profit is coming to me. So is right. it better to not list as many items and make less of a profit because my net is down or keep up with? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. That's a question. Yeah. Just the thought. Well, I mean, you want to comment? well, it is interesting because I think, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to chime in about this from the perspective of, I just did the whole, don't listen anything for months yeah. and like, yeah. and like let it sell down. And I mean, really like towards the beginning of that, it was great because I was still making pretty much clo like closer to like a normal amount of money and I wasn't buying any inventory yeah. and I wasn't, you know, um, I wasn't paying anyone to help me with listings either. I mean, for me, it was a little bit different because my assistant, if you will, is, um, she's been working on some other admin stuff for me rather than processing new items. So like normally the result of her work would be listing drafts basically. Um, but I was still paying her just to do something different. So I didn't get to like recoup that cost at the time because yeah. I want to keep her and I want things to be like blowing and going again. Well, but, so that was kind of one of my thoughts too, is I'm like, if I, she's amazing yeah. and if I get rid of her and she's a contractor, yeah. when I want to start listening again in three months, is she even going to be available? Right. Right. Which I mean, I feel like that's a fair, a fair consideration. Um, but like, I do think the the returns were diminishing over the eight months of not listing new stuff so by the end of that i was like barely making anything and so i think if there was a happy medium somewhere or a maybe not happy is the right word <laughs> maybe a tolerable <laughs> medium <There you> go. <laughs> where like you could be like okay i really don't want to do these listings myself but like for example with scheduled listings like what if you could literally dial it down to like one new listing a day and you could bulk do those, you know, yeah, drafts probably. or whatever. And then like, you're still adding some stuff, but not totally slowing it all the way down. I mean, that wouldn't solve the issue of keeping your person on board or keeping. Yeah. Them. But well, so this is what I thought too, because in talking to the virtual or in talking to the growth advisor, mm -hmm. um, he said he wasn't a huge fan of sell similar because and I think we talked about this. Yeah. He had seen at uh, there's times that even though you end it and start a new one, it still keeps some of the data. Yeah. Um, so I was actually thinking about having her create a completely new listing. So yeah. keep the same item and then just go in and make a completely new listing for that same item. Yeah. Um, all the same stuff. And then also it would be like an audit check, like make sure it's yeah. all right. Um, to help try and keep some of my older stuff going mm -hmm. um, and then maybe listing less. Yeah. But I, my struggle is, is if I list, and this is kind of what I've landed on. If I was in charge of listing, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> like I don't like it and it would probably always get put off. I can like take the photos and like hunker down and do that. But as far as like sitting yeah. at the computer and listening, I just don't know that I would do it. And then there would be nothing happening. Well, maybe the, maybe the tolerable difference then, I mean, maybe you could, I don't know what, what the exact setup is obviously, but maybe you could scale her hours back somewhat and maybe split the difference where she's like auditing five and listing five new and just like slow it down so that you can reap the benefits of selling through what you already have and, you know, Not take fine. a break from pumping new inventory in. But like, but on the other hand, so on the other hand, I'm in the spot now of like, I've got this pile of stuff. I probably have, I don't know, maybe like, maybe like 200 ish items like on hand 
things that I've really recently sourced or things that moved with me from Georgia that had still not been listed, which I generally don't have death piles, but like I had a few things. I know. mean, I don't think that's yeah. a death pile. I, think I don't that think so that's either. A, you were like, yeah. Yeah. Like, but like that stuff and then like the stuff that I've really, really recently sourced, probably about 200 listings worth of stuff in there. And the thing that I have been noticing coming off of this huge period of time of not listing new stuff is like, oh yeah, those low hanging fruits are like making a huge difference in my daily amount, my daily total of sales. Because the stuff that I'm listing now too, it's like, I'm really trying to focus on fewer, but higher dollar items, higher ROI. Right. And so like in the last couple of days, I've sold multiple items, 40, 50, $80. And like, I think the whole month of August, I didn't sell anything over $40. Like it was just trash, you know, like. So putting the new stuff in is helping. So I I mean, this is why I like chatting with you because what you had said is ultimately the kind of where I landed, but I just wanted to like gut check with someone other than my husband who's like, it's your business. Do what you you want. want. You're like, I don't know what I want. I want to know what works. Yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah, Because that's kind of what I ultimately, what I landed on scaling back for hours a little bit, still listing um, maybe like, because right now I'm doing about eight, 10 ish new. So maybe doing like five new listings and then have her go in and do five old listings, audit them, which should take significantly less time for Like she could probably do yeah. five and half the time to do new, new ones because it's already there. She just has to like dual screen it and fill it all out, not yeah. do it up. All right. Let's check in with the chat. We've been chatting a lot. I know. I know. Hey, chat. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Christine is a new YouTube member. Welcome, welcome. Oh, cool. Hello, Carol. So she gets to see that video right now if she wants. Yes, yes, Christine. The promoted listings um, video is up if you are a member. The Crafty, the crafty Girl. girl. Sorry, if you guys don't follow Tori. Crafty Girl. I've been following you on Instagram and you're so fun to follow. Just so you she know. Ha- yeah. So she is. I don't know if she's even doing reselling anymore. She did a lot of vintage, um, but she's kind of moved her channel to a lot of like crafting and like. Yeah. It's yarn awesome. and stuff. It's Textiles. Really cool. I love Thank it. Thank you for yeah, <laughs> work. Um, Tommy in Seattle, help all as well. Do you have any sneak peek, good info for eBay Open, an announcement of anything new? Um, so Anna's your girl for that because oh, I didn't. Man. There was a sneak peek last week that I spoke at, um, and I think I'm like pre-recorded somewhere within eBay. I I, I can't say what it is, but um, I did something pre-recorded for them. But as far as anything else goes, e, uh, Anna was out at headquarters so any little yeah. things you can share with us for those of oh you who don't gosh. know it's next week next week right <laughs> we had confusion yes it's next week next- it's, yeah the live studio events are tuesday and then the virtual conference is pretty much all day wednesday thursday and friday um and if you follow me on instagram i've been trying to like put more stuff on my instagram because if you followed me before you know that sometimes i'll do nothing for like months and then i'll throw something occasional in my stories well i've been really trying to be consistent because it's been so fun connecting with so much more community and I have some like really fun stuff with eBay to promote. So it's, it's just fun to like share all that, but I've been like blasting my stories with like stuff that's coming up and other different sellers who are presenting. And, um, just today I put up like all the different things that I'm going to be involved at, uh, involved in during the week. So networking rooms, I have a seller led session. Mm-hmm. I have a secret surprise session that I can't tell you about, but is going to be really exciting. And all I can say about that is watch all of the keynotes. Make sure you're at all the keynotes and you won't miss it. Yes. But um, but basically, um, yeah, I think that – so one thing that's really exciting is – I guess I'm probably allowed to say this. Um, <laughs> there's okay. – I always have to do some gymnastics in my mind really quick before I say yeah. something. But um, last year there were like over 10,000 sellers that attended, which is yeah. huge. And this year, I will just say the numbers are looking even huger and crazier. And and eBay last year, like really, they love to just squeeze us and ring us out for feedback about things because they want to make their events relevant. You know, they really want to know how they can improve things like across the board. They have a very open attitude about that. And they have really made some good changes this year, I feel like, to respond to some of the feedback they got last year because we all know that all of us would probably enjoy, you know, if all things were equal, we would all enjoy being at a live in-person event that was like a big fun party, you know, that wasn't cost prohibitive and that was like easy, easy to travel to. And like, it's not 
Yeah. It's just not feasible right now, you know. Because they never. like, well, is it double? I mean, they've significantly increased the networking oh. opportunities and the seller led sessions too, which is what I yes. like. Because they got the feedback last year that that was the most attended were the seller led sessions. Yes. So I think they sure. like doubled how many of those there are. But I, I will say, I mean, this is probably more vague than you want, Tommy, in Seattle, but um, there are definitely some announcements and things throughout the conference that I think are just like really amazing. And that's the kind of stuff I'm really not sure if I'm allowed to like say for like spoiler reasons. Probably not. But like there's some really So cool watch all the keynotes. Yeah. Is what I'm saying, watch all the that's keynotes. Where they, yeah, that's where they are going to tell you. There's some very cool like new things that they're rolling out, you know, ways that they're expanding tools and stuff for us. And, it, but it's not just tools. It's like, I feel like they're really trying to be future thinking. And like you were talking about Sarah in the sneak peek, I'm really looking forward to the like economy update. <laughs> Give us I know. The That's what I'm holding landscape. on for. I'm like, tell me what's going to happen. <laughs> well, I was, was going to ask you because like last year, you were saying last year you were kind of scratching your head at the same point. And it's worse. Yeah, right. But you did, it did get better for at some, some period of time, right? Like after that point. Well, so then... it got better. My gross got better, mm -hmm. but my net, because I started paying promoted listings. Like last, oh, right, right. before eBay opened, I was doing, I was doing promoted listings, but I think I was doing like one or, well, what was the minimum? Two yeah. It's like two or three. Yeah. yeah I so I was two. doing that. And then after eBay opened, I was like, okay, let me start messing with this. Um, And so that's yeah, what has got me that bump. But now my gross is down and my net, right? So like it's, and I don't like, yeah, yeah. There's no other tricks I know to do. Right, right. You're and like, I think some of it's just the economy settling in after COVID was actually really good for a lot of online sellers. Yeah. Um, and I think it just might just be the new normal. Uh, so trying to figure out ways to make it through with this new normal. For sure. Um, when, since we're going to move away from eBay open, I'm going to say, I'm definitely looking forward to the economy update, see how that goes. And Anna's going to be in Georgia for the live session. Yeah. If anyone's in Georgia, come say hi to me. And, uh, we don't have a big thing here in Denver. No one, they're not coming here. In this, well, maybe someone, I don't think anyone from eBay, but we're doing like one of the seller led, um, events. So if you're yeah. in Denver area, there's one in Boulder. I'm not putting it together. <laughs> Because I missed that boat. They sent me an email this summer and I missed it and missed the deadline to sign up for it. But someone uh, is doing one in Boulder next week. So as long as everything is well with the kids and no one's sick or anything, I will be at that one. Yay. So if, you're, if you're local and you want to come say hi, um, come up. Let's come up to that one. Uh, Val, it's so fun to see friends that we haven't seen in like six months. <laughs> because we took some time off. I know. Um, hello, Valerie is here. Gretchen, do 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 a rural, rural squirrel. She is local. So hopefully I'm I have been following you too, rural squirrel. You're She's also fun. Really fun she like follow. travels all over doing, um, finding lots of cool stuff. So fun. I love it. Okay. Let's see. Tommy in Seattle says, I thought sell similar was supposed to be a new listing. What kind of data were you talking about that comes along with it? Mm -hmm. Um, in theory, yeah. and this is what they told us last year, which is when I started doing sell similar, it does end it and it should create a whole new yeah. um, item number. However, I've heard from multiple people within eBay that sometimes that doesn't always happen and sometimes it'll hold on. I think especially like the more that you do it, yeah, um, that it might hold on to old data. Um, so like I genetic mutation <laughs> almost. It's right. a remnant. Well, <laughs> also, I mean, this I've heard literally both ways from different growth advisors, but at different time periods. So like yeah. the more recent thing that I've heard is, you know, it actually does matter. Like if you're not changing anything, it's the exact same photos. There's something yeah. about the algorithm that goes, I think this is actually the same listing. And I mean, it's smart, right? Like it just yeah. keeps getting smarter and smarter. Yeah. But that's the thing. It's like, well, if you ch picked a different one to be the main photo, that might help. If you switch up the title a little bit, that might help. But I don't necessarily think you have to do that every single time. If yeah. But if you're like frequently selling similar, making it more different will help maybe alleviate some of that. But also, I think so this could be wrong. So tell me if you think this is wrong, Sarah. I, the, what I took away about hearing about doing it too frequently yeah. was that if you basically the bad data is like 
oh, look, he, let's pretend that everyone, algorithm included, does acknowledge that this is a new item. Yeah. Well, now this same item tried to be sold 10 different times by 10 different listings and none of them sold. So the data for that item is like, oh yeah, well, 10 out of 10 times this doesn't sell. You know what I mean? I mean, it makes sense if the algorithm is picking up that it is the same item as it used to be. Yes. So if it's not actually showing that it's a new item. And that is a good point that you bring because the algorithm is constantly changing. It is. This is so not because eBay's like, haha, I'm out to get you, but they're it's smart. That's like, how algorithms work. They're adaptive. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. And yeah. it keeps getting smarter and smarter. So it would make sense that they've caught on that we're doing this mm. um and it's like oh hey this is the 10th time they've, they've done this right it's the exact same listing i'm not going to show it as much or like think about if okay if somebody you know this is has, all hypothetical we have no yeah idea. we don't know this is total <laughs> speculation right but, but i'm gonna like, i'm gonna switch it up and try and i'll share with you guys if yeah yeah because like if if i listed this thing and nobody you know it's placed really high that eBay pushes it, it's high up in the search, whatever, because it's a new item and, you know, every people look at it, but they always choose something different and end up buying that. Then it's like after those first few days of being pushed up high, like, look, it's me, I'm a new item. Then it kind of falls back right down to the bottom where it was and it sits there until you sell it somewhere again. And then it gets a little yeah. moment in the sun again. And then when there's not traction or something else is always chosen instead it falls back to the bottom like that's my understanding not like literally in the search results but yeah yeah i mean at a very like yeah minimalist yeah explanation. in a conceptual yeah. way <laughs> yeah. right which is why it makes sense why so similar does work because yeah you can have an item and it's not necessarily a bad item it's just not being seen when the person is ready to buy it to be right. seen and yeah. for me and i was talking to my growth advisor and um he didn't really know women's fashion so he's like that sounds good <laughs> <laughs> I was like, cool. Um, but like, I was like, okay. mine is like, a lot of mine is like seasonality, right? So it's not that this pair of jeans that I listed was bad. It was, it was summer and no one was looking for jeans. And so yeah. now from eBay's algorithm, it's been three months and it, since it's been on there, no one's bought it. They're not pushing it anymore, but it's not because it's necessarily a bad item. It's because it was the summer. And so now that it's the fall, yeah. if I do a sale similar, it's going to increase it. I think I'm in talking to you and talking to the growth advisor. I think I'm going to have my virtual assistant work on, I don't, I don't know the number yet, yeah. um, but ending an item and creating a completely new listing and changing one to five things, like all yeah. the things that need to be changed, but at least one, like even if it's changing the order title or the photo or just something so yeah. it's completely new. Well, and I don't know about you, Sarah, like I know your stuff generally probably sells through a lot faster than mine, like on the whole, but like there's a lot of things that I have, you know, have in my store and I have sold them similar, but you know, they've been in eBay for years and how many times have the categories been refined and the item specifics have updated right. and things have right. changed about literally the structural categorization of those items that I've just been like, yeah, whatever, grandfathered in, however it makes sense. And I haven't looked at them in depth. I've been right. busy listing new stuff. So you might even find stuff like that where it's like, oh, well, here's a new item specific that wasn't there when this was originally, originally listed. And now that's going to help set me apart. Like I bet an audit will catch a lot of little stuff like that. Well, and it's a good way now to, and I talk about this a lot just in general to do it, but it's a good way now when our net is lower yeah. and instead of feeding in new inventory that we have to spend money on, finding ways to sell older inventory and help keep that net up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lisa is saying, I am still doing sales similar, but trying to improve my photo by editing and not getting the item out mm -hmm. to rephotograph and improve my titles. Um, so this is good too. Like if you don't use a white background and instead of being like, oh my God, I'm going to go back and do it. I know a lot of sellers that are like, I'm just yeah. moving forward going to, yeah. but they do have a new white ground, white background remover that is actually <laughs> gotten significantly The better. mobile one is amazing. Yeah. It, yeah. I tried it recently and I was like, and I use a white background, but I'm like, even just going yeah. in and doing that. Cause sometimes I get, get like the shadow baby. out or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just changing that up makes it look like a brand new item. Yeah. It gives it more dimensionality too. Like even if it's a white item, like it looks like it's got some dimension. It's cool. Uh, how, how, how is my fellow on mommy doing 
uh, kids back in school and more time to work. Um, so this is interesting. Kids are back in school. I did an update last week, but I don't know if everyone caught it. Um, I'm, I, we ended up homeschooling. We, me ended up homeschooling my <laughs> six-year-old. He was kindergarten last year. All three kids are neurodiverse on different diagnosis. Um, but we pulled him out of school and I kind of just, I was still reselling in mostly the same capacity. I just wasn't doing YouTube. So you guys didn't see what I was doing. Um, but I was still listening 10 items a day, shipping what was selling, having my virtual assistant, getting inventory, all of that. I just wasn't out on social media because that's time consuming and I don't really get paid much for that, to be honest. Um, so they are back. We put him back in school this year and it's actually doing really well. Fingers crossed so far. He has a really great teacher. Um, and the other three are in school too. So technically I have more time to work. However, because sales have not been great, I'm supplementing by subbing at the kids' school. Um, so I'm at the kids' school with them. <laughs> not I, I'm not in their classrooms, um, but I sub this morning for a couple of hours. I think I subbed every day this week um, just to kind of help the slower sales. I'm still keeping up with everything, um, but just not. Again, it's going to probably come out of YouTube. You guys aren't going to see me on here as much. That doesn't pay really very much. <laughs> I enjoy doing it and I enjoy interacting with people. Um, but that's, yeah. yeah so way easier to set aside the time when you're making bank though. Yes. Right. And I, I enjoy, to me, YouTube is I enjoy the teaching aspects and I enjoy yeah. engaging with people, but from a monetary perspective, it wasn't. And now I'm in a classroom teaching. Excuse Granted, me. it's like much younger people. <laughs> um, it is kind of filling that bucket for me as well. And there's only so much time in the day. Yeah. Um, I'm a posh only seller. I want to cross list to eBay, mm. but the shipping details is what has been keeping me away. So confusing. Um, well, Anna's a pro at shipping. Yes. My if you, Packer. <laughs> if you are on posh only, um, my guess is you're probably mostly clothing, shoes kind of seller. Uh, so it's actually pretty easy once you get into it. What I did, and I would not recommend it doing this now, now that I know more about shipping, but it got me over onto eBay is I did everything in flat rate envelopes or boxes. Cause you have an idea of what's going to fit in there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the cost of it. Um, and then as I started learning like, Oh, yeah. anything that's under a pound is, you know, this price and anything, but that at least got me over there. The thing it's expensive. It's you're probably going to cost more than most other buyers that way. Now my recommendation would be to go to eBay Terra Peak data, reason, like look up women's tops and see what the average shipping cost is, and just do yeah. that until you figure out what your average shipping cost is because then yeah. you're competitive. And honestly, it is a lot easier. Like recently, as of recently, as of the new USPS Ground Advantage program, it is even easier. So like what I would do if I were you, because you'll probably still have some stuff that's, you know, under a pound shirts or whatever. And you'll probably have some stuff that's several pounds, outerwear, shoes, whatever. But like if you, because on Poshmark, you don't have to, do you have to put in the dimensional weight at all? They no, just no. give you a label. No, you just get a label. Okay. Wow. Which that's is so outrageous. Easy. Because, no, <laughs> it's a label up to five pounds. And I'm like, why more people don't bundle? Yeah. You know, I mean, you're paying $7 for shipping up to five pounds. Yeah. Whenever I buy anything on there, I look at their entire closet and yeah. I like, put everything okay. in the box. <laughs> so they pay for it too. It's like, yeah. okay, okay. Unless you give a shipping discount. So you could, you could essentially do that. Um, you could essentially do that on eBay, but what I would do if you are able, because you still have to weigh things on Poshmark to the extent that you know it's under five pounds. So you probably already have a scale, eh, no. et cetera. Not really. I don't think I've ever. Because <laughs> it won't get caught. Okay. Well, in any I case. I mean, I don't recommend that, but I've never. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I would put, I would use um, on eBay, if you have a store on eBay, like mm -hmm. a store subscription. I don't know if you can do this if you don't have a store subscription, but you can get the smallest one, which is like $8 a month or something. Um, if, if you have a few items or whatever, but you can have a business policy and you can say it's calculated shipping, only choose one shipping service, USPS ground advantage. That's basically like first class and priority mail combined. Oh yeah. And then, and then it's calculated still. So the thing about that is you will have to put in some kind of dimensional weight, like, if it's, if, if it, you can put it in a package that is under 12 by 12 by 12, then there's no way it will ever be considered an oversized package. And which if you, for, I mean, any, if you're on Poshmark, I mean, yeah. you can sell hard goods and stuff on Poshmark technically, but like clothing, shoes, like you're yeah. going to under that. Right. Right. So probably all of it's fine anyway, but like 
you you know, you can put that like in your listings. You can just put 12 by 12 by 12 because you know it's going to be something smaller than that probably. And yeah. then if you can at least roughly estimate the weight, then they'll be paying you something that's probably about right, you know, that's going to cover or have a little extra because you'll have a seller discount on your label price if you print your labels through eBay. So that's probably what I would do is just go, okay, I'm going to do USPS ground advantage only. It's on average a day, one to two days longer than what priority mail takes to get there. Very reasonable. And it's up to like 70 pounds and there's insurance included. Yeah. Like it actually in insurance. is extremely easier now, right? Yeah. You just have to know like first class and priority. Um, yeah. And then you can like mess with like, oh, you can add priority later if you want. So people have choices and stuff. But yeah, USPS ground now is. Yeah. It's like. And priority is great, but it's more expensive for only getting it there like maybe one day sooner. So most people wouldn't care. They wouldn't care about the difference, you know. So if you want to do it simple, just choose USPS ground advantage only and put in some kind of weight that's approximately correct (laughs) and 12 by 12 by 12 inches or smaller, whatever is appropriate for your items. But hopefully that helps. I I would like deep dive into this with you if you want. Just reach out to me. Yes. Uh, I don't really know anything about your store. (laughs) Will so. you put your name in the chat? Can you? Yeah. Do or do you want me to? Because uh, you will come up as Anna Packer on here. And so oh, yeah. your name is hard to find. Oh, man. Um, although I don't, I was going to, we haven't promoted your book yet. And I oh, gosh. Because I, when I see your name, I see um, your cover. Yeah, I don't have it's, it. Anna has a book. It's amazing. Go to her Instagram and find it. Yeah, hold on. I have one right here. I'm. It's making me like weirdly sign in so I can talk in the chat. So if you want to throw my handle in there, please do. How do you spell it? A N N A. Oh yeah, that's the hard part. I uh, yeah, you're not. This is my book. It's called Miscellaneous, and I'm probably gonna write a follow up soon. <laughs> but anyway, oh here we go. It's okay. Oh, you got it. Okay. Um, that's I me have on a, Instagram. Not so much a. I mean, maybe a question. You can tell me what you would do. But just an interesting thing that happened to me on eBay. Um, so I had a buyer and I knew, you know, he had this, not a, I don't like to say problem buyers, but a buyer that you're like, this is going to get returned. Yes. Right? You like, see them a mile away. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And I knew it was the case, but I, I couldn't stop. Like they bought it. They were asking me all these like weird measurements and stuff. And I'm like, dude, it's a freaking vest. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like Columbia vest size medium, right? Like they're yeah. all basically anyway. Yeah. So he does end up returning it, whatever. I have free returns. Um, it, he was like, oh, I shouldn't have to pay for it. And I'm like, you don't have to pay for it. It's a free return. Just open a return, say it didn't fit, send it back. Yeah. But then it came through as I had to upload a label. But I looked at the listing again and it said it was a free return. So, And yeah. I have it turned on where like if it's a free return, you just push it through. You, eBay sends them the label. I don't even have to see it. Oh. Um, but it came through to where I had to like upload uh, item. Like if you have a seller pays for return or like an item not as described, right? And you have to like approve it and say, oh. okay, then you have to pick a label. Uh-huh. But it wouldn't let me. Usually I'm just like, oh, let eBay send them an A. Right. Label. Because I don't like, want to go find a label and send it to them or whatever. No, no. But that wasn't even an option. It, That's I weird. Didn't, I, right. So my only option was to upload my own label or to send them money to upload the label. And then I asked eBay. So if you, I, my best way to contact eBay is Facebook uh, Messenger, like, eBay yeah. for business. Yeah, yeah. Um, in case those who don't know, because it's hard to find customer service and I don't have concierge service, which I'm trying to get. Like, yeah. I spoke at your event. Can I not have a concert? Like, let me in. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I was talking to them and they're like, huh, sometimes this just happens. You're going to have to find a label. So I, at the end of the day, because I've been subbing more and I'm just like, I'm not dealing with this. Yeah. I just refunded him and told him to keep the item. I, it was like $17. And I was like, this is not worth me yeah. getting the item back, paying for shipping. And then I have to, th- like, I'm going to make $2 on this. Yes. Item. And it's- the hassle of dealing with it on top of that. Like, no. Yeah, it was just a weird. I had like never seen it before. And it was like, huh, sometimes it just happens. You're like, unhappen it, please. <laughs> yeah, that was my story time. Um, have you played with an IA background? Maybe AI? That's what I was thinking. I'm like, is I have not, me? but I know people have been. Have you, because I'm not listening on my own now, but you're listening. Have you played with the AI for um, in within eBay? It's for like the description? Yes, I've been doing that. I actually really like it. Um, Is it faster? It is. Well, yeah, I mean, I would barely put a description anyway, but here's the thing. 
I don't know. This is a question for Val. <laughs> I don't know exactly to what degree auxiliary information in the description affects people finding something or whatever or placement or anything at all. But like it is a lot more like descriptive. So it'll be like, this would be perfect for any collector or this would look so cute. Oh, it tells any, you all that? Any little girl. Yeah. It's like narrative. Like it's like a, if you went to, you know, a regular like clothing website and there's yeah. a description of that piece and the style of it and blah, blah. And so I would just like literally copy and paste the title into the description. So there was something in there and that's all I ever used to do. Yeah. So in terms of like, sometimes it's it's drivel and it's like too much information but for me it's way faster to like hit use the ai description and then just like edit it or delete the second half of it and like there's something in there that's like you know kind of charming and like includes yeah. some more color and some more details but i didn't have to rack my brain at all so like i've really been liking it personally uh -huh. I haven't because I don't list, so I haven't had my virtual assistant use that. I was like, in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to go through and do a couple and see how yeah. it is before I tell them to use it. And then I've never done that. Right. Like, I can't even go in and use the AI that's going to make things faster to list. I'm not going to list my own items. That's good. Yeah. Right. Well, and it's only on mobile right now, too. So, like, I'll do uh, it. when they do it from a computer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then that. But I think they're probably going to expand it. I mean, you know, depending on the feedback they get, but. It's interesting that they make it so narrative because they've said for numerous times that you don't need to have it that way. Like Poshmark, you do. They like it to be yeah. all fluffy and stuff. Um, but that's what makes me wonder what the value of having that type of content in there is. Because is it only like the buyer experience of it looks like you put more time and effort into your listing and they somehow care about that? Or is it like, oh, some of this these extra nuances are gonna like help your set your listing apart? I don't think so because they yeah. said recently on eBay for business podcast um that the description is no, like it kind of that. pointless. Yeah. I mean, I use a description because Poshmark likes it and Poshmark's algorithm, at least back in the day, used to read through the description. Um because yeah. you could only have like four characters they used to have such a small character for their title it was ridiculous yeah. and they've since changed so i think maybe um it's different now but they would go through the description their algorithm would go through the description yeah. and the cross list that i just kept it all the same um but they were saying it literally it means nothing um i use it too if it's like like the item doesn't have measurements or have a size and I'm like, oh, I put a size medium based off of the measurements in the photo, like kind of a disclaimer. Yes. Of, like, I don't want an item that is described. Right. To cover myself. And like with the AI description thing, the way it is now, like you do, you do need to like glance through it and make sure it's not saying something egregiously wrong or like, you know, for example, classic example, right? If it's an item that's the color gold and the description says it's made of the purest 24 karat gold. You're like, no, okay. it's not. Okay. And you can't. Right. Because then you're going to get an item out of this They're like, why is this shirt not gold? Like, yeah, gold. yeah. Exactly. I thought um, I was wearing a pure gold shirt for $12. Question I only list on eBay. Has anyone used Flip Free to cost pros? I ponder cross listing, but have not taken the plunge. Mm. If I do it, I prefer, prefer to use a free service to give it a try. Um, mm. I have not used Flip. You're using this perfectly now, is that? Yes. Yeah, so I have. I haven't. I've literally cross listed like a handful of things um, onto Poshmark, higher higher end like you know vintage outerwear and stuff. Um, I haven't put a whole lot of time into it because it took me so long just to get my top ten percent of my store backed up on Poshmark on a list perfectly. Yeah. But I'm planning on putting some time into that and just exploring it because I have never this. This is so cool, actually, because this is kind of the tale is oldest time uh, question of like, do you diversify your inventory itself and or do you diversify your platforms? And I've always been of the inventory camp and you've always been of the platforms camp. Yeah. And now both of us are going like, what can I do to make what my else? sales better? And maybe we need to take a taste of each other's medicine. <laughs> I know. I so, well, so the one thing in talking with a growth advisor, because I have been messing with it a little bit, um, yeah. is doing more men's. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And my men's wear like that's my diversifying. I don't Yeah, but that count that counts. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like Jaron Moore from Big Dreams Reselling, he does pretty much exclusively men's fashion. Yeah. He is crushing it out there in Texas. Maybe. I mean, my numbers on my men's are good. Yeah. But I, just, I never did it in the past because the thrift stores around here, you go in and you couldn't find like they all had holes in it. Men wear their <laughs> 
Um, and I don't wear know anything. It out. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know anything oh, about it. But funny. now that I have someone who sources for me, I can just be like, hey, I want this kind of men's stuff. And then she sends it to me. So it's easier for me to kind of mess around with and see. Um, yeah. I haven't, I haven't dove quite all the way in yet, um, but the numbers yeah. so far look pretty good. Yeah, um, that is really interesting. I would say for a flip, this is one other thing that I'm looking at. Because so my net is down. I can't make more sales happen, at least any way that I found. So I'm like, how can I cut expenses? And I use Posture VA, which is a sharing service on Posture, on Posture, on Poshmark. Um, but it's like $25 a month. And there's some free ones out there. So I'm like, well, maybe mm. I cut that expense um, or like list perfectly. Maybe I, so I'm going the opposite. I'm like, I'm not selling anything on Posh. Maybe I cut oh, list yeah. perfectly well, altogether. I mean, that's true. It's like, because there's saturation issues, you know, yeah. across the board, but differently on different platforms too. Um, yeah. do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm looking through questions. Anna's book is great. I bought it. Looking forward to a follow-up. Thanks. I am looking forward to having something to write about. Oh, wait, what is this? AI is, oh, yes, right. <laughs> this is what we said. AI is an item, not a subscriber. It's AI NAD. Yeah. It should, it'll be a whole separate type of INAD. No, just kidding. Right, which is what I get concerned. And then they're doing it, and then you're having to go through and read it. And I'm like, is it actually even saving money? Yeah. Um, can a customer return an item past the days you have on an item, like 30 or 60? Um, I have recent experience with this, but I want to hear you? what you do. I don't know. I never pay attention, really. Um, I feel so like all of mine are usually within 30 days. Yeah, technically no. And eBay will tell them and eBay will back you. Um, at least the ones that I've had, mm -hmm. the ones that have reached out to me, I have actually let them. So you mm. can, you can say you can go ahead and do it. Um, because, and maybe it's a sob story, but I'm like, if it makes them happy and come back, and if this is yeah. a true story, I'm going to be the nice person. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. one person was like, I was in the hot, or my son was in the hospital. And I'm like, if this is really true, like, I don't want yeah. to tell you this $30 of an item that I'm going to sell again, or yeah. that cost me $3, right? Like I putting good energy out into the world. Yeah. Um, so they can ask you for an extension and then you have to push it through. Um, but when I talked to eBay, cause they asked me and I was like, what, like, where am I sitting here with it? And eBay was like, you don't have to, like you're backed. They didn't do it. We will fully back you. If they leave a negative feedback, um, you don't, don't remove it. Yeah. So I just mm -hmm. am like, what is the situation that you ordered something and over a month later you discover it doesn't fit or whatever. Like, yeah. What but is yeah, happening? I the couple of times that I had it, the people were like, um, you know, something outrageous happened and I just didn't. Yeah. I didn't it. never got it. Yeah. It's like never had the chance to even open the package or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, if that's the case. Um, all right. Okay. I think we're good. Um, we have a few more minutes. If anyone has any questions, I think you probably, oh no, my timer is about to go off, um, <laughs> to go get the kids. You guys know that one. So if you have any other questions, um, I think I wrote, oh no, no, what I wrote down, we already talked about. I just wrote down the thing about um, diversifying because like, you know, I don't know, like I, I'm trying out list perfectly. I was already paying for something to back up my listings and I haven't got all of my listings on there, but I have the top 10%, which is the most valuable, which is what I would most like to ensure because <laughs> I've never needed the backups ever in the history yeah, of my yeah, store. So yeah, like, I, I, prob I probably won't even need it, but if I did, at least the most valuable stuff would be, you know covered or whatever but um but yeah it's just like it, it does feel like even though list perfectly seems like it's going to be pretty as easy and straightforward as it can be to cross post like i i don't know i'm just like do i want to deal with another platform like i'm just such an ebay like loyalist that i'm and and i mean it's fine like there's a lot of other people who will only shop on those other platforms yeah. but i'm just like how much of a learning curve is it going to be? Is it really going to be worth, worth it's it? It's not. It's not. eBay is by far the worst. Not like the, worst. the most complicated. The most complicated. eBay is by far the best, yeah. but the most complicated. The rest of them, I mean, I haven't sold on all of them, but Poshmark and Etsy are both very straightforward. I mean, you. Yeah. Well, I have experience on Etsy too, but. Yeah. One thing I noticed though is like all my photos from eBay are like not enough pixels for Etsy somehow. I know. I see. I don't cross this with Etsy anymore. Yeah. Um, I used to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's like the mental bandwidth side of it too, right? Like any yeah. type of diversification you're doing requires some more mental bandwidth, really, when you're starting at least. Yes. Oh, this is a good point. 
because that is some of the mental bandwidth is getting it taken off. I heard Vendu has an auto delist feature, but I have not looked into it. Um, I've heard that too. Yes. And I've heard that it's amazing. I looked at Vendu um, because they have analytics. They have a lot more features. They have analytics. Um, it's also much more expensive. Is it? Uh, it is when I was looking at it. I haven't even looked into it. Um, I mean, it, they have a lot of, like the auto do list is amazing because you don't have to worry about like going in and taking it off of both. Yeah. What I do is when something sells on Posh, which is like once a week right now, because it's so bad, um, I go and automatically and take it off of eBay, like on my phone right away. Because you do yeah. not want to sell something on eBay that is sold somewhere else. Right. You're, you have the most consequences on eBay too. Yes, right. Yeah. Poshmark, I have my virtual assistants go in once a week and take anything off that sold on eBay. Okay. Um, huh. And I've sold stuff on Poshmark that sold on eBay probably once a week too. Maybe that's why my sales are bad. Um, it's not because it's always been the case. Um, but I, I mean, you have stuff sell. I don't know how Etsy is anymore if they yeah. care as much. But um, oh, so Tommy and Seattle say not to put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. I don't know. I my take on this is become an expert in one before you branch out because yeah. if you are not great at one and then you go to the other and you're not great there, you're not going to reap the benefits. Right. Obviously you are an expert at the top of eBay. The most complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So I think you're not taking much mental bandwidth and that could be something that your uh, sister-in-law could do too, right? cross posting computer work. If she can't be listening, she yeah. can take that on. That's true. That is true. That's a thought for sure. Cause I'm just like, I don't know, like dealing with, um, I don't know, just like, ha like delisting is probably the biggest barrier and why I haven't just launched into like cross posting a thousand items. Cause I'm like, well, what if they do sell? And then I'm like, oh my gosh, every 10 minutes I'm like, I gotta get on my phone and like do this. Like, I hate that. I don't want to live that way. Yes. You know? Right. right. So Which is then maybe paying for Vendu for that yeah, peace of mind. Is... Maybe it is. But see, I don't want to pay for Vendu unless right. unless I'm actually going to make enough more sales to justify it. <laughs> right, right. If anyone has a crystal ball, here's my mailing address. Um, just Yes, kidding. right. Yeah, no, I mean, it is valid because it is a mental yeah. capacity too of being on your phone and living yeah. like that. Well, and to speak to Tommy also, it's like, like, you know, Sarah sells mainly in a handful of like fashion categories. I sell across like a bunch of like hundreds of different categories. I have like super miscellaneous inventory, hence the book title. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, you know, eBay is the best platform for like a lot of the type of things that I sell because a lot of those other platforms just don't have that type of stuff on them as much. Right, you have so most of my audience that. is probably on eBay, but that's what I was saying earlier. Like I have chosen to diversify all of my eggs are not in the, in a category basket. They are on a platform, but they're across a bunch of category baskets. But I think that there's merit for sure in being having the most diversification possible all of the 4D ways that you can do it. So that's why- The I'm only thing I think is vintage, people will shop on Etsy for that. Oh yeah, for sure. Which that's- And you, you know, have a decent amount of that. I do, yeah. Poshmark, I, you can live or take. Mercari was trash for me. Like you may get a couple of sales, but the bandwidth of that, I don't think it is. But I yeah. do, when I was doing a decent amount of vintage my, and my average sale price, like I think collectors and people who really want the vintage go to Etsy willing to pay for it. Yeah. Where eBay is more like- I don't want to say garage sale, but it's more like garage sale where they're not wanting to pay quite as high. I mean, Let's you have some collectors. The market. <laughs> there you go. We'll take no, it up a step. It's true though. It's like Etsy has a higher caliber reputation for that type of stuff. And so, yeah, I would probably put some vintage clothing and housewares on Etsy. Yeah. All right, friends. I think that's a wrap. My timer went off. Um, we are down to no questions. Next week, we are not here because it is eBay open. Um, Anna is going to be all the places at eBay open. So Coming make out sure with me at eBay open. Uh, you can follow her stories and her mostly just stories, right? You're not posting a whole bunch. Yeah, I don't make a bunch of uh, actual posts, but I will also like at eBay, I'm going to be co-hosting networking sessions, uh, you know, morning and evening and afternoon, basically on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So, you know, if anybody's on, like come hang out. And I put all the information about that in my story. So, you know, which ones that I'm doing. Um, also no obligation. There's a lot of cool people at eBay open and there's a lot of cool stuff to hear from them. So but, go where your heart leads you. But yeah. I would welcome you to, you know, hang out with me. for. And sure. I don't, 
I'm looking. I don't think we have, we don't have another one scheduled. Um, probably we'll be back in October, but I may be done with life by then. Not life. I may be <laughs> done with uh, reselling by then. We'll see what they have to say at eBay Open if they can keep me hanging on. Um, so maybe we'll be back in October, but keep an eye out yeah. on my channel. Um, I usually post them in advance for you guys to know. So yeah. All right. Have a good, I keep, I want to say weekend because we're, I'm off tomorrow. Hey, so. you have a good weekend. Have a great trip. Yes, thank you. It's going to be All awesome. Right. Wish I was going on a trip. Although I'm kind of glad I'm not because I've been going on trips, not vacation yes. I know trips, you were just but... down with Atlanta for it. Was yes. it, is that Lori's? Yes. Oh, it looks so fun. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah it looks Reflections like of Trinity, one of the OG eBay for charity sellers. Her operation's incredible. If you guys yeah. Oh, know, did you go uh, down and see it all? Yeah. Well, we didn't go to her like food bank, but they feed 7,500 families a month. And like literally the mayor of Powder Springs, the commissioner, they all spoke like it was a huge deal. It was amazing. They're, they're doing a huge building project soon and having their own facility for the first time in 20 years. But she like built this thing from the ground up. No, she's so inspirational. Yeah, she's it's so cool. Awesome. We're talking about Lori Wong and her eBay store slash food yeah. pantry Reflections of Trinity. So go I'll look put that it up in if here. you're interested. Is it w How do you spell her last name? W-O-N-G. Oh, that's what I have. But then I was like, that doesn't look right. Uh, it is. <laughs> reflections. Uh, yeah. And she's in like Powder Springs, Georgia. So. Okay. I put it in the chat so you guys know what we're talking yes, about. Yes. Go check All right. her out. That is a wrap. See you guys later. Okay, bye.